Hello, good morning and welcome. And thanks very much for joining me. Um, I'm out in the garden studio, shivering. It's going to be cold. I have to stick in the um, extension lead in order to get myself really comfortable here. But today is the first of the 14 days of art with Anya and Damien. And uh, I wanted to just make a start, you know. It's been kind of playing on me that I've not made... Um, oh yeah, it's playing on me that I've not uh, actually um, made a start. So I thought there's nothing, there's great power in action actually. And uh, so this morning I woke up and decided I was going to I was going to do this. So I'm surrounded by clutter and um, it's kind of good clutter, though, because I feel like I want to be able to reach like a crazy chef. I want to be able to reach for whatever it is I might need um, as the need arises. Now, as I'm looking at the paper, I've just I just stuck that paper on there. But, you know, it's a bit it's kind of annoying me a little bit because it's buckling and stuff. And so I'm going to take that off and let's see about this. It's a bit of a wild card now, but I thought actually yeah, I quite like that pattern paper and I like the way it sticks out beyond it. I forgot to say we're painting a cyclamen today. This is one of my favourite subjects. Those of you who know me will be like, for goodness sake, here she goes again painting a cyclamen. But it's just, I felt that today there's enough variables um, without, all, without also introducing a subject that's new to me. So I've perched it on top of a bucket there now so that I'm looking across at it at eye level kind of. And um, I'm able to see... Um, my paper and see the cyclamen by only moving my eyes so I've set myself up with my um I'll just show you there what I'm doing my it's it's just a board balancing on the table and on my knees diagonally so that I can um see what I'm drawing and and transfer to the page fairly easily and swiftly so I've decided on the spur of the moment there to put this dragon paper on as a the wall of the studio behind the flowers. Let's see how that goes. It's quite a bit to react against, but sure, I could always subdue it with some brown paint or something. Okay, so, all right. Yeah, you see, I was gonna use, I think it's still gonna work. Hmm, but I am gonna do the subduing thing. Am I? Um, Or I could do this <laughs> and put some brown paper on there. And I think I want it to be quite dark, so I'm going to use this. Um, that's black ink. I want it black. Um, I want to make that a bit darker so that the pinks uh, sing out a bit more over it. But maybe it's dark enough. Maybe it's dark enough. Yeah, it'll work for now. Okay. Next step now is to find something to describe the pot. I like to tear rather than cut things because it gives you some, something to react against. I'm just using the Pritt stick to stick these things down just to make a fairly cheap, to make a, a quick start. So that's the light side of the pot and I thought the reddish the reddish color might work for the dark or because it's a bit too thick I don't want to use that actually and uh, so instead I'm going to use some of this red acrylic paint I've got here kind of red let's see if it'll work in some ways you want to start by um, giving yourself something to react against did I say that already I probably did <coughs> I've recorded this a couple of times because it's just uh, a bit tricky setting up sometimes. Okay, but I'm not going to turn you off again now. This is it. For good and glory. Day one of the 14 day challenge. And you're thinking, holy God, what's she doing there? But very often I find that if you overshoot... <laughs> if you... Uh, I was going to say, if you overshoot the edge of a thing... Um, like the edge of the vase there. It's quite nice then to, have it, to be able to draw back into it later on. No, I want to get something to describe next to describe the leaves. Can you see? I don't know if you can see all right there. I'll just pull you over a little bit further. That's a bit better, isn't it? 
and then I could maybe lift up the tripod at the back so that you can see it a bit better there. Hopefully the whole thing doesn't collapse now. Dear God, it looks like it's defying gravity there, but anyway. Now I've got some more paper that I painted that I found last night, just painted paper. And I thought that might work for, yeah, describing the cyclamen leaves. But I might first use some green um, paint. This is Jenkins green, it's acrylic. Just gonna put that there on the shadow side. Mm, and I've got a brush here that's fairly dry. So I'm just gonna indicate the position of those leaves. And like I'll probably bring some of those leaves down over. There's another bit of collage paper there. I might bring some of those leaves down over that. I do have some PVA glue that isn't, uh, but it's just a bit kind of overly runny. Let's stick it out there. Oh my gosh, this is actually quite a physical workout as well. Holy God, I'm stretching everywhere. Right. No, just put some glue out. Because, what was I going to do? I was going to stick on a leaf over the edge of the vase there. This is paper that I had, um, that I had painted last night for one of the children's lessons I'm going to be doing. When, I'm, when I say lessons, remember Picasso said that all children are artists. The trouble is to stay that way. So in a way, I'm kind of hoping that I might learn from the children on ways of getting back to really capturing the essence of things. But anyway, this paper I'm using myself now, so I paint another sheet green for the children's class tomorrow. Um, okay, there we are, that's all right. You know, I could have done better with the with the thing it's standing on, but I think it's all right, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I was thinking in terms of color, you know, I might have put a, pa a pattern cloth there or something. But then, you see what's happening there? Yeah. We're getting there fairly quickly, I like that. Now, I've got some white oil pastel here because I think I will draw the outline at the bottom of the vase with my white oil pastel to capture the surface of this circular uh, plant stand, which is actually a very dirty pot from the garden that's probably still dripping onto the studio floor. It was full of leaves and stuff. Right, so that's that. And now I'm going to use oil pastel in orange to draw this side. Will I? Or maybe orange is better. There we are, yeah, that one. All right, and hmm, I'm a little bit nervous, you know. Um, right, these flowers, it's funny, normally the six of them when I paint them, they're, they're kind of shooting straight up and it's lovely. Whereas today these have decided to go in a different direction. But I'm going to go with it because I think in some ways we're all going in different directions all over the place these days. Maybe the flowers are the same. I've just got some of this lovely pink um, acrylic paint. Now, you, you, I'm aware that you won't have maybe all the stuff I've got, but do your best, you know. Like, in a way, a pink highlighter pen might have a similar effect. I'll just show you. That's not really the colour now, but you know, you might find pins that uh, are the colour of the flowers that you're painting. And you could tear those out to make... What was I doing with these now? I was going to actually paint the paper kind of pink. I was going to paint this... This is just photocopying paper. I was going to paint it pink and then maybe when it's dried, tear out some of the flower shapes. So this is ending up being quite a lot of collage, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure if I want it to be that much collage, so why don't I just put the shapes of the flowers there. And just put the colour of the flowers up there and we'll see how we get on with that. There's a couple kind of coming down a bit lower and then these ones are rising up. And then there's a few that are actually lighter in colour over here, so I'm going to get my white acrylic paint now and Mix it in with that. Have I got white here somewhere? I know I put it here. Yep, there it is. Um, here we are. Just my fingers are very cold. 
I might film the one tomorrow, either in the house or sort myself out for um, the heater and the light and everything. Maybe I'll do a few today. But I have to go to the shop for my friend. You know, the lockdown started last night and one of my friends isn't very able to move about so well. Well, she can, but she, she just wants to be careful with herself. Um, and I fully support that. So I'm going to go um, out for a wee while this morning, but then I can come back and start again um, with a different subject. Woohoo! You don't believe it, do you? I am actually going to do something on the features, I think. Eyes, nose and mouth and watercolour. And you know what? I'd love if you could put below in the comments below, write down what you would like to see happening here. And also let me know if the angle of the camera is OK and stuff like that. Like, I think I need to do a bit of work there. And even to, get, to allow myself to have a bit more freedom in the whole thing, I could do with using the easel and standing up. But I just wanted to also kind of let it be seen that you won't have to have all the studio equipment in order to do... Um, I want to look at you there. You don't have to have the studio equipment that I've got here in order to be able to do a drawing. Like you could use the back of an envelope. In fact, this is the back of a sketchbook and I've got the back of an envelope for my next one. Um, you know, this this thing, I mean, I've got the back of a hardbacked envelope. So you can use a, or a cereal box, you know, be inventive. And the more inventive you are, the less precious you are, I think, about what's happening on the paper. No, what else could I do there? I think I could use stick. I 